He's like, we'll have a special session, but by April 1st, if we're not in rubles. Hey everybody, it's quite a trading day. Uh, there's some really big red flags that are going on. And we're gonna drill into this. This is gonna be a little different tonight. We're gonna really focus on a macro picture so we can understand what the heck actually happened today. I have some longs, I have some shorts. We're gonna go through those and we're gonna talk about the macro at the same time. Now, this is one that you should be familiar with if you've been following along for some time, BPT. We've been talking about this since about four bucks, looked at it again, ran up, looked at it again. So if you've been following the top 10, you, can, you know we've been playing with this for some time. I still like it. We bounced very nicely off the 21 day moving average. You are forming a wedge up here. Even on the sell down, the one thing you'll notice is you did not see energy sell down. Watch this if it flips tomorrow. If you flip this 15 and a quarter, I think you're gonna see some incessant buying in that. Now, if you remember where this was during the last push, during the Iraq war, that was back here. This is, that is really the only other time frame that we have to actually focus on. And this went on a multi-year run. And based upon that, I think this has massive potential and I don't think people are, are, are fully grasping it yet. So I do like this and I would watch for that 15 and a quarter level. Subscribe to the channel, click all notifications because what we go over here is extremely timely. Also, we do put out private videos during the day. And the only way to see them is if you are subscribed and click all notifications. Now, this level is important. Based upon your comments, you wanna know about stops. You should not be taking out this low, 14 and, let's call it 1420. You should not be doing that tomorrow. If you did that on a short-term trade, you'd simply get out of the way. But this space is something that we really need to focus on. Now, this LNG, this is another one. We talked about this. We looked at this breakout. This was actually in the top 10, came back down to the 21-day moving average. Then we have the gap up. Peace talks, that didn't go so well. So here we are, and we're watching this push. Now, there's a major development going on in this space, and we're going to talk about that in two seconds, but just look at this tomorrow. If you get over 41.50 tomorrow, which I think you're going to, I think you're going to wind up retesting this high very, very quickly, but watch the 143.82. You can see resistance right in there. Just watch that level. It's important. But let's talk about the macro picture and what's going on out there. So energy, this is really the, the move, and this is the crux of the support line, right? We've been following this pretty closely, bonking all along it, right? So if we get rid of all the, the bells and whistles and just focus on the simplicity of it, you can see it's pretty clean, okay? Now, why does this matter? Well, it matters that we came down to it, we held, and then we bounced, have a little doji, but look at this close, all right? So this close is the second highest close that we've had on the XLA. Why is that important? Because we had a lot of selling going on today, which we're gonna address in a moment, but what I wanna do is I wanna focus on this in energy. Putin has made demands. He is no longer going to sell gas, energy, oil, whatever deal he has with the EU, unless they give rubles. So they're calling for a special session. He's like, we'll have a special session, but by April 1st, if we're not in rubles, we have an issue. Now, I don't know what that issue will be. I don't know if he's gonna stop gas, but I do expect it to greatly affect the price of energy. I don't see how it can. So I don't think, I think people are really underestimating what could happen here. There's gonna be a point here where if they're not getting paid, they're not going to deliver the product. And that's going to be a really large issue. So I do think you could see more movement out of these. And I'm actually surprised that this is not moving further along. Now just watch this wedge line here. Let's get rid of this arrow. And just watch this wedge that's forming here because to me this is setting up to break out if you look at this in a longer time frame you can see this level pretty clearly right so get above that if, if you can get above this 79.50 by the end of the month that'd be pretty impressive it'd be something that we haven't done in multiple multiple years about seven years now micron had earnings and they wound up not doing so well today As a matter of fact that's pretty much as bad as you can possibly get you tried to rally off the 50 couldn't do it. This was our open. Obviously, we tried to rally during the day, was not received well at all. If you actually look at where that peak is, you can see over here how you just have Wick City over and over again at that level. So whoever was selling here, that resistance line has not gone away, nor do we think it's going to go away anytime soon now. So this is not something I'd be rushing into. But if you take this low out tomorrow, which I think you could do, this this level this we're looking at let's call it 78.50 to make sure that you get through it and you get through the 21 day 
this probably is going to have another massive sell. Now, if you just focus on it from this perspective, you can see this wedge line here. A break of that level and break of this line can lead technically to touching the $68. I'm not going to say it's going to happen in a day, but it's definitely something to consider. And you're seeing this issue with the socks as well. So let's address that now so that you can see this because we're going to, again, talk a lot of macro moves here. So this is your other wedge line. The worst thing that we talked, and we talked about this in the trading room today, the worst thing that could happen was us not hit a higher high and break out of the 507. Guess what we did today? We did not push. We did not break the higher high on the news. We actually reversed, broke down, made a lower low on the socks. We have sliced through this level and we have broken back into the wedge line. Now, could it be worse? Yes, it could be worse. We could have broken the 200 and the 50 and we have not done that. It's important to understand and recognize where we're at. Now, this is exactly last time where I was concerned. You see this break last time? This is exactly similar setup to where I was concerned last time. And what did we do the next day? We reversed. Could that happen? The answer is yes, it can, but this time's different. In a minute, I'm gonna explain why it's different, but I want you to understand that I think that there could be possibly more selling behind this, and we're gonna to get to that in a moment. But this was one that we were short, and frankly got stopped out as soon as it broke the wedge line it looked like it was going to go and that's what we had today uh, if we ever had flim flam in the market this was the day that we had flim flam it was all over the place so you you orb on all these trades you break out of these higher highs and we haven't seen this this kind of shenanigans in probably about two weeks but we were full of shenanigans today. See that, see how you break over that, that 122.97, everyone's feeling good about themselves, breaks down. You look like you got a bullish hook reversal. What happens? You don't have a bullish hook reversal. Comes in, breaks support, sells down all day, okay? And people say, well, that's because of the news of Apple. It's not because of the news of Apple, right? There's always a reason you can find why something did what it did. The bottom line is price pace. Everything else is conversation. So with where this is at now, essentially I have a shooting star pointing down. All I'm looking for is for this to break that level tomorrow, 112.67, and I will add to the short. Caveat, I am short this right now. Uh, if you're aggressive, you can short it after hours, but you're doing it into the PC inflationary number tomorrow at 8.30. Uh, and you're doing it in the jobless claims as well. So there is risk and there's always overnight risk as well as you're aware of. So let's just keep on rolling here. Now I mentioned this time's different and the question is, well, why is this time different? So I just wanna point this out. This is the 10 year note, this is the yield. As the yield rises, people are selling bonds. $500 billion worth of bonds outflows during this period of time, actually in the month of March. There's only two other times in recorded history that we have this in the past 20 years. One is 2018, the other one is 1994. This is why you're seeing this happen. This is why you're seeing utilities go higher. The inflows out of bonds are going into equities. This is hitting all time highs. Why? Because people are selling bonds. Now, these people that were selling bonds, they're buying again. So once we got to that two and a half, that was it. Now you're seeing buying stepping in and that gets into the inverted yield curve. But what does this mean for us? Well, that's why I'm saying this time on this break, it's a little different because if you take a look at it before, when you sell down, we never sold down on bonds like this before. We need to keep that in mind. The second thing we need to keep in mind, this whole trade on the queues has just been a collapse of volatility. Now, if you take a look at the queues and you see where you're at and you see very clearly that if we put this pre and post in, that this was a higher high at 3.72.05, got right to it, rejected, and now have a lower high off that level. So if I look at that data, I did not make a higher low, which is the exact opposite of what you wanted to have happen today. At the same time, what didn't we break? We couldn't close over the 200. Could we reverse tomorrow and go back up? Yes. The reasons why I'm saying that it might not happen, and again, it could happen, but I'm leaning towards it might not happen, is because we're starting to see this. In other words, we have our first push up and our first higher high over another bar today. Now, after hours, it's bouncing around a little bit. Here's your trend line. Bonk, 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 right? And you went right to your trend line. Now, this also choreographs with something else. We are deep towards the low end of this range, very deep into it. Now, could it go lower? Absolutely, it could go to 15, 16. But what you want to watch tomorrow, I'm going to give you areas to watch. This is a long-legged doji, right? Long-legged doji signify what? They signify uncertainty. So we break this level, okay? Then maybe it's risk on again. 
But I would be really cautious here. I'd be very, very cautious on what you're saying. The bottom line is this was a reversal today, no matter how you want to look at it. We went to the top of the upper band on the Qs. We've completely rejected off that. We've completely rejected the resistance level and we've completely rejected the 200 day. These are facts. This is what happened. And we have to deal with what's, what's actually happening, not what we want to have happen. And there's a lot more data that I could go over, but I would just argue that being cautious at this particular time is probably not the worst idea. That's all I have. Everybody, if you need anything, reach out. Remember, trade the win tomorrow.